All right, so this video is being going through a question out of Griffiths. Uh, this is Griffiths' quantum mechanic book. Uh, it's the most recent edition. I believe it's like the third or fourth. It's the big red book with the Schrodinger cat on it. Uh, so this is problem 1.4 out of the textbook. I'm going to go through and do most of this, at least the important parts, and hopefully it helps people. And at the same time, I get a little bit more practice because I'm taking quantum mechanics this semester. So this will be good practice for me. And if it helps somebody along the way, then awesome. So we have our wave function, and it's defined as either a times x over a. Uh, notice the difference in a on this interval. a times b minus x all divided by b minus a on that interval and zero everywhere else, okay? So where capital A, little a, and little b are positive constants. So part A asked us to normalize the wave function and find big A in terms of little a and little b. The way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna integrate over all space, so from negative infinity to infinity. The magnitude of our wave function, which is a function of x at time equals zero, squared dx equals one. So essentially what this is saying is uh, there's a 100% probability that we're going to find this particle somewhere. And the somewhere is coming from the fact that we're our, our, our integration limits here from negative infinity to infinity this is actually a probability density you could think of but if, when we integrate over those limits you're guaranteed to find the particle it must be somewhere right if you lose your keys or whatever well it didn't disappear in the ether it's it's somewhere so that's basically what this is saying now even though it's a little intimidating to have these um integrals with these limits it's actually not that bad because we can limit the range quite a bit because we see that our wave function is actually zero otherwise which means if it's not between zero and a or a and b so this really we could think of as being the integral from zero to b magnitude psi x of zero squared dx equals one and this is our new this might as well be infinity. This is the, the, uh, it might as well be infinity because we know the wave function is zero elsewhere. So the probability of finding it elsewhere is zero. Um, I guess you could think of this as being kind of confined in a way to a box. Well, uh, I guess kind of like an infinite well where it can't escape. Uh, but anyways, I don't want to talk about that just yet. I'm not even there yet, so I'm not really comfortable saying that uh, and we can break this integral up into two separate integrals which is the integral from 0 to a the magnitude of our wave function squared dx plus the integral from a to b the magnitude of our wave function function of x at t equals 0 squared dx equals 1 so I just broke this up over the two intervals. Now I'm gonna substitute what the wave function is and I'm just gonna note that from zero to A, we have to use this wave function. And from A to B, we'll use the other. So nothing crazy there. So we have the integral from zero to A. We're going to have A squared, so we're squaring everything, X squared divided by little a squared dx plus the integral from a to b a squared b minus x squared divided by b minus a squared dx must equal 1. Again, that's just the squared of the wave function, so that's basically given. Now both integrals have an a squared in it, so I'm going to pull an a squared out. And what do we get? Well, I'm going to do this integral really fast. I don't want to 
waste too much time integration. I'm hopefully we're okay with this. Uh, we can factor the one over a squared out and integrating that you're gonna get one third a cubed. Okay, so that's the first integral. Uh, the other one's a little bit more complicated. So the a squared still factored out and we can also pull out just for that one integral one over b minus a squared the integral uh, a to b b minus x squared dx parentheses because there's still the a squared we factored out equal to one so right off the bat i can see that this a squared cancels with all but one there so we're going to get a squared a over 3, that part's nice and simple, plus 1 over b minus a squared. And then what do we have here? Well, we're actually going to have to do a little u substitution. Uh, you could expand it. I think u substitution is quicker. So we'll let u be b minus x. And then negative du is equal to dx. Perfect. Well, let me just move this out of the way. So I'm just going to put that over there. And I'll still do it in yellow here. So we see, I'm going to leave the limits off. I'm not, I could replace the limits, but I'm not going to. Uh, this is a minus because of the minus du. u squared du. And we're going to close off the parentheses. All right, so that one just required a little u sub, nothing crazy. Minus, uh, I actually should move this. This is being multiplied. I'll make this the negative. Sorry about that. So now this will be times one third u cubed, but u cubed is just b minus a cubed and we're going to evaluate this from a to b so and close parentheses a squared times little a over three minus one over b minus a squared well if i plug in b this is all going to be zero right because this will be times one third zero cubed so this all is actually just zero Plus, so if I plug in um, let me make sure I did this right. Yeah, so if we plug in the zero, so we're going to plug in the B first. That is going to yield us a zero. We obviously don't want that oh well, we do but it'll, we don't have to worry about it so you're actually going to get plus one third and then b minus a cubed okay so that negative that comes from it actually uh helps us out here this is all equal to one i keep forgetting to write that and we're going to get a squared times a over 3 plus b over 3 minus, um, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to write it down. So the, we had a b minus a squared here. This will actually just become a 1. Oops, forgot it. So that's just a one now. Sorry about that. A over three plus one third. I'm gonna say B over three minus A over three. Okay. Well, now that we have that, obviously you can see that these drop. This is all equal to one. So we have a squared b over 3 equals 1. And from here you can see a is the square root of 3 over b. Okay, so we got that. 
and so that was how we normalized when we set it equal or that interval equal to one uh, and we found a in terms of all of that so if we wanted to sketch the wave function uh, I'm just going to make a note about this um, if we look at well, I'll kind of do a rough thing real quick, just so we get some sort of idea. That's two-dimensional. Uh, where are we? So the wave function only exists from 0 to A to B. Meaning, all around here, it's going to be 0. Now... You also need to keep in mind that your constants were positive. And if you see, it's essentially just a line. This one will go up and down. And it's going to depend on the values, how steep it is and whatnot. Uh, but you'll get a graph that looks something like that. And for C, where is the particle most likely to be found? Well, that's going to be here, and that's just because that has the most area under our curve. That has the highest probability density. So, that's all there is for that. You obviously could extend these if you really wanted to, but it's not really necessary. Part C. Uh, actually, we just did C. We did B and C. We talked about that. Uh, part D. What is the probability of the particle? Oops. Finding the particle to the left of A. Check your results by the limiting case B equals A and B equals 2A. So just like how we did our normalization, our probability function, our probability density, will be the integral. So this says left of A. So we'll be integrating from 0 to A. And I'll talk about this in a second. The magnitude of our wave function squared, dx. So obviously the particle is not going to be uh, to the left of zero. So we can start our integration at zero, and we can go up to a since that's what the question specifically asked for. And left of a, so value smaller than this. So this is good. And now all we have to do is solve this. So this is actually not bad at all. We have a squared. The integral from 0 to a, x squared over little a squared dx. The only thing to remember is we already know what a is, and a squared is just going to be 3 over b. So our probability is 3 over b times 1 over a squared uh, times 1 third a cubed. So just integrating that, pulling out our constants, this 3 drops, this a drops with all about 1 there, and your probability is equal to a divided by b. Now we can take the extreme case, uh, first one when b equals a. If a equals b or b equals a, then you're just going to be dividing by the same number, so that's like a over a is 1. So there's a 100% probability that if you go as far, if A is equal to B, in other words, if we look over this whole region, you'll find the particle, which is obviously true. That's the only part of, the, uh, of our graph that has area under the curve. So, okay, that's a good sign. And then the other one is when 2A equals B. Okay, so if you were to plug that in, uh, a divided by 2a, that gives a probability of 1 half. In other words, a 50% chance. And uh, so that is when we said 2a is equal to b. In other words, when a is half of b, in other words, it's essentially right in the middle. Again, makes sense because that's about 50. I mean, the graph can be misleading, but it, it, it works out. As for E, I'm just going to set up the integral, but it's following the same process. Uh, so part E, what is the expectation value of X? 
which we use this notation for expectation value, will be just the integral from 0 to a, x times the magnitude of our wave function there, dx, plus the integral from a to b, x, the magnitude of our wave function squared dx. And if we're finding the expectation of x, then we're just putting x here. And for x, it doesn't matter because there's no operator that's actually operating on the uh, wave function. So this one, you don't have to be as careful. Uh, so again, all you would do is plug in the wave function from 0 to a, from a to b, and then, uh, you know, it's going to be the exact same uh, process. Uh, just solve the integral, basically. So hopefully that helps. Uh, if it did, please like and subscribe. I'm going to try to post a little bit more frequently, just some problems I do that help me, and hopefully they help other people too. So 